So now that you know the rules for a hole punching, let's investigate the Kaplan strategies that you'll be able to use to answer these questions efficiently and effectively. The first strategy is to use the line of symmetry of the first fold. This, in fact, is a process you'll want to do first for every hole punching question you tackle. The idea is that the first fold of the paper will always create a line of symmetry. So whether you're folding in half, having a corner fold, having a diagonal fold, wherever that initial fold was, you're creating two identical segments. So whatever happens in one segment must happen in the other. Therefore, if you look at the answer choices, you'll find that they must be symmetric as well along the line of that first fold. The easiest way to understand this strategy is to see it in action. So let's look at an example question together. Here we have a diagonal first fold. For right now, ignore everything else. Let's just look at that first fold. Seeing that line that goes from the top right to the bottom left in all of the answer choices means you'll be able to investigate whether they are symmetric or not. So let's go ahead and draw those in. Starting with A, if you're looking at the two triangles formed by splitting this paper in half, those triangles must be mirror images or symmetric to one another. A is not symmetric. Those holes do not line up with one another across that particular line. And again, the reason why we drew this line in is because that's the line representing the line across which the first fold occurred. With B, however, notice that those dots actually do line up. And the same thing applies to C and D. B, C, and D are all symmetric, so we can't eliminate them. But notice E, as already drawn in here for you, is not symmetric. Those holes do not correspond with another. Those half triangles are not actually mirror images, and so E could not be possible. Regardless of anything else, where the second or third fold were, where the holes were punched, does not matter. If these are not symmetric, they cannot be right. In fact, this strategy may be applied to some questions and you may be even able to get the correct answer right away just using this one idea alone. Now, in order to finish this one in particular, we would need to do some more analysis between B, C, and D. We could look at the position, where that hole actually was and where it's going to end up by doing a bit of mental unfolding to see that the answer here is actually D. Don't worry so much about that yet. The whole point of this exercise was simply to identify those lines of symmetry. We'll continue practicing with this when we get to our practice question in just a moment. Either way though, let's talk about another strategy you can use if the line of symmetry didn't eliminate every single choice, and that's the number of folds and also the layers of paper. So the number of folds that you have determines the maximum number of holes you can create per punch. So if a piece of paper is folded only one time and you punch through it, well your options are either to create one hole or two hole. And that's it. For one punch, if there's one fold, the maximum number of holes you could create is two. You could do one, but the maximum is two. Likewise, for two folds, the maximum number of holes you could get per one punch is four holes. So if you fold a piece of paper in half and then in half again, it'd be four layers, that's how you could get four holes. You can get less than that, but the maximum is four. Finally, for three folds, the maximum is eight. Now the reason why this is important is because if you see any answer choices that have more holes than you have folds and punches and that those would indicate, then that answer choice could never be correct. So for example, if you saw a figure that had two folds and one hole punch, that would have a maximum of four holes. So if you see any answer choices that have six holes, you can eliminate those right away, regardless of where the holes are you only need to know that there's too many and it couldn't be possible. 
Note that if there's more than one hole punch, you'll have to factor this in multiple times. So if there's two folds and two hole punches, well, you know the maximum number of holes would be eight. If you need to get even more specific, you can actually count the layers of paper. So this will get you not only the maximum number of holes, but the actual number of holes. So if you keep track mentally of how many different layers are present in each area that gets a hole, you'll know exactly how many punches are created. And this way, again, you don't have to identify position, you can just see how many holes there are supposed to be. So let's try it out with the practice question here as well. So this one has one initial fold followed by a second fold. So you see it folded from left to right and then from left to right again. So two folds means a maximum number of holes of four for one hole punch like we can see here. Looking at the answer choices, well, that's not going to be terribly helpful yet because all of the choices have four or less holes. What we could do, though, is count the exact number of layers. So looking at the initial fold, we start with one layer, of course. The first fold, though, is going to create a section with two layers and a section with one. The next fold will fold that two on top of the one, so there'll be a section with three layers and a section with one. And we see the hole punch actually goes in the section with three. So we know, therefore, that the correct answer must have three holes punched. So with that information alone, we can eliminate B and E. Now that does still leave A, C, and D, so we will have to use symmetry and or position to figure this one out. To review, symmetry is looking at that first fold and where that occurred. This time it was near the left hand side, so the entire pieces won't be symmetric. However, column one and column two must exactly match one another, and so therefore A is incorrect. C and D, though, do follow our rules. Again, remember that we're only looking at columns one and two here because that's what part is symmetric. Columns three and four aren't relevant. Finally, for this one, we will need to think about the position. You can see the hole is punched in the top, and it never leaves the top, so it does have to be there. D does not have it, but C does, and so in fact, C is the correct answer. So we're almost done, but we do have one last strategy, and that's just to keep track of the number of punches. So again, this is very similar to the number of layers. It's just adding these strategies together. So if we know that a certain area has, for example, three layers of paper and it gets a hole punch, and another one has only two layers, well, and that gets a hole punch too, well, then we're going to add those together for a total of five. So simply, if there's multiple punches, you add together the total number of layers to get the total number of holes. So we can do one final practice question with these. We're looking at a similar start to what we saw before, where we have that quarter fold in the beginning. We can use that to identify symmetry one more time between column one and column two. So we can use that to eliminate then answer choice B. From here, we can look at the position of where the holes are. We can see they're towards the center on the left. So those should be there in the correct answers. And in fact, they are there in all the correct answers. So now we'll need to use the number of layers and the number of holes. Looking at these, we can number them out to see that the initial portion had two and one layer. This was then folded in on itself to get one and three layers. Remember, the paper is always folded towards you. So actually what happened was the right hand side was folded on top of that initial fold in there. So although you can't see that line anymore, there is a distinction between column one and column two. Either way though, this is then folded back again, again towards you over back on itself to get a total of two and six layers. Holes were punched in both so that means we have a total of eight holes and only one choice comes close to that and that's answer choice D. Note that although it took a little bit of time to actually write all this out, this is the kind of process that you would do mentally on testing, counting the number of layers, counting the number of holes.
So by breaking this down into very concrete steps, you'll have a nice system for tackling these questions in 20 seconds, but also that will help you to very quickly eliminate some choices and you may even be able to get the answer before you've applied all these strategies and certainly in a much more accurate way than if you were trying to mentally unfold these patterns, especially when they're more complicated.